So yeah, start off with a good glue. I use Gemtac Permanent Glue. This is uh, my favorite glue to use. A lot of people swear by E6000, and if that's your jam, cool beans. I like this because it leaves room for mistakes, and it's very forgiving if you do make a mistake. Um, E6000 is not as forgiving. So anyways, but I love this glue, Gemtac by Beacon. The other thing you're gonna need is uh, something with a wax tip. I started off using a pen with some beeswax formed into a point. Uh, they make these, there's a crystal katan I think you can buy for 50 bucks. This was cheap on Amazon, came the next day, came in a two pack, it's awesome. You wanna make sure that you keep the tip of your applicator very, if I can get to focus, very clean. If you push this into the glue and you get the glue on the edge of your applicator, um, it's going to lose its stickiness. So you wanna make sure you keep that rhinestone tip clean. If you need to push the rhinestone down, this has an awesome little metal side that you just use that side to push. So the last thing you're gonna need is a container of some sort. I bought this on Etsy. Uh, I think it's specifically designed for beads um, and it works really well. I'll show you what I have. So this is what I keep my rhinestones in, um, but you can pour some rhinestones in there. And the reason why I, I like these things is because once, so you're gonna pick up the rhinestone with the wax tip and you're gonna pick it shiny side up and then you're gonna push it down into your glue dot like that. Um, so once you pick up all of the ones that are shiny side up, all you do is do a little shaky, shaky, shake, and they'll flip over. Um, this is uh, this is pretty good as far as they flip over pretty good because of the, the grading here, but it's kind of hard to get them back into my container without, ugh, without going everywhere. So what I typically use actually is just the lid of the container. So I'll just pour my rhinestones in here. A couple fell out, oh well. And then I'll just use that, pick them up this way, and then shake it side to side, and they'll usually flip themselves over. And that's all you need. Let's get started. All right, so as you can see here, I've already started a little bit on that edge of the skirt band. Um, I didn't know how many stones I was going to need, so... I started off a little bit more spread out than what I ended up doing. You'll see in a minute. I go back through um, and add more glue dots in so that it fills it in a little bit more. I think this was the moment when I was like, yeah, that's too much, too much space in between. So then I kind of go back in and add some more. So at this point, you may be like, what is she doing? And I'll be honest, at this point, I didn't know what I was doing. I did know that I wanted the stones to be heavier than what I started off with. And I didn't really know how many stones I had on hand. So I was conservative. But anyways, I was like, no, I want this to be heavier. So what I'm doing, and what hopefully you'll see towards the end of the video, is... I'm gonna do a fade or a cross fade with the stone that I'm working with here, which is called Caribbean Sea, and then with its Aurora Borealis counterpart, Caribbean Sea AB. The AB just has a coating on it that bounces the light off differently. And so you can kind of see it on the edge of that applique there, and it's, it's just got a different look than the stone that I'm working with. So I'm going back in and I'm filling in some of those spaces so that way it's much heavier with that Caribbean C. And as I move left on the skirt band, I'm going to spread the stones out more. And then what I'll do is when my other stones come in the mail next week, I will fill in with the Caribbean C AB, the opposite from left to right. And there is no pattern or method to my madness here. I'm just putting dots in space. It's not exact at all. Thank you. 
So these are little glue halos, and this is preferred. If you're working with Gemtac, you want to put a glue dot about the size of the rhinestone that you're working with um, and press it into the fabric so that you get that little halo effect. And it will dry clear, and it will also shrink up around the rhinestone, and you won't be able to see it at all. So you're going to hear some squeaking here in a second. I cannot think of what was going on, but we're in fast mode. So that is, explains the chipmunk's sounds. Anyways, uh, I hope you enjoyed our rhinestone application tutorial. It is pretty simple. It's mindless uh, once, you, once you lay it down, <laughs> um, but it becomes pretty therapeutic. And this whole thing took me about 15 minutes. So the other thing, the only other thing I'm going to say is always order more stones than you think you're going to need because it goes by really, really fast. And here's the finished product from tonight's uh, tutorial. But I just wanted to show you, you can't see the glue dots, the halos that I was talking about. See how they've dried clear? So, and they're on there. Those, those rhinestones will not come off. Uh, unless you pry them off. And I will say that the nice thing about this Gemtac glue is that you can actually pick them off if you need to. And it's not like E6000 where you're going to rip your nails off while you do it. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this rhinestone tutorial. Thanks for coming along, and we'll see you next time. And here we have the home stretch of this color on this part of the dress. This whole thing took me about 15 minutes, so it goes by pretty fast. You also use more stones than you think you need. Um, so I always, I always order at least two or three more gross than what I think I'll need, just because it goes by pretty quick. But there you have it, basic rhinestone application.